air masses and fronts. So this will all be about blobs and blobs and blobs. The first thing to do is to review what you've done previously, which is about winds. So the winds, as you saw them before, and you drew your nice little map previously, show that the Coriolis effect makes the winds deflect, bend to different directions on the Earth. So where we are, we have westerlies, the winds come from the west, around the equator, they come from the east, and there's kind of regions of high and low pressure, low pressure around the equator, high pressure at the top of the tropics and such. Well, this was, this first diagram is showing the ideal version, going, this is what it would look like, it really should look like on Earth, however, things just aren't that simple. Of course, they are more complicated, so actually, instead of having the whole long region of highs, there is this kind of blob of a high pressure, blob of high pressure sitting over the northern tropics, and there's blobs of low pressure up near the poles and moving around, so these are not quite exactly always coming from the west, winds always coming from the east of the equator. Instead, there actually are blobs. And on the edge of these blobs is what is called the jet stream. So the jet stream is this really high paced, fast winds are way up high. So we don't feel the jet stream on Earth, but airplanes use them. So if we're trying to fly from California to, to New York, often airplanes, if they can, they'll take the jet stream. It'll make them go faster across the country. Then it's slower coming back. You want to avoid it. So the jet stream is the edge of that blob. So on the edge of that cold blob at the top of the Earth, there is this jet stream, this really fast moving air. And so we can actually take a look at it. So what does it look like if you click on that bottom link? Well, the bottom link will show what it looks like right now. And that just means that, okay, there's some fast ones up in the northern, northern by Michigan. But that first link, the jet stream, here's a nice one. So this has got all this mm, interesting information. So let's look at the... Eastern Pacific and Western North America, and I recommend look for animated. Let's see what it looks like animated. And we want to have the animation go for the last six, seven days. So build. And what it's doing is putting together all these pictures. So the little tiny blue arrows are showing you how fast the wind is in the upper atmosphere. And where it's dark gray, it shows the arrows are really big. Where there's not really much arrows, there's not much wind. But this is showing the jet stream. This is the edge of that big cold blob of air. So the cold air is sitting over Alaska. Oh, what's that? And so then going across the United States is this nice, fast wind. It was kind of slow. Come on. Come on. There we go. Blob starts over again. So this is fat pattern of fast air moving around. And that is holding in the cold air up cold air blob from the Arctic. Um, if we go back, we can also look at the entire northern hemisphere. This one's pretty cool. <clears throat> the animated loop here. So we can actually get more days. 20 days, huh? And so this one is from the entire northern hemisphere looking down. So this you can see the actual edge of all of the cold air at the North Pole. So it goes all the way around over Russia, over Canada, over the Pacific and the Atlantic. But this is the edge of that cold air. This is the jet stream, the polar jet stream, all the way around. Very fast winds up high in the atmosphere, containing this cold blob. All right, so keeping that in mind, going back to the presentation, now you're going to go and learn about these blobs of air actually have names. So time to look at those.